Hey guys, this is Brooke. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a day in the life video and I just wanted to give a little intro so that it all made sense. So the first day I'm showing you is going to be my day at rotation. We also have something called a residency showcase uh, this evening and I'll be participating in that. And then I also want to show you the day that we actually present our capstones, which is the next day tomorrow when I'm filming this right now. And I want to just show both of those and just show you what the day in the life looks like for a fourth year pharmacy student. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy. So I wanna provide a little bit of background about what I do at rotation each day. So each month is a new rotation for me. This month I'm at Publix, which is pretty familiar for me. I work at an Ingalls pharmacy, so I'm used to the retail side of pharmacy in that aspect. Um, here at Publix, we are in the prime of flu season. So we are doing lots of flu shots, lots of shingle vaccines, pneumococcal vaccines. Um, today we even got to do a hepatitis A vaccine, which was really cool to see. And so what my typical day looks like is I am able to help in data entry, putting in prescriptions, making sure everything lines up. If something comes up that maybe there's two different directions on the prescription, like we had one today that it had take one daily, but then the next sentence said take two every other day. So that's definitely something we want to call and verify and make sure which one it is that the doctor wants them to do. So that would be something that we would do. We also mix in the shots and everything like that. So making sure that we give time to talk with the patient to go through their vaccine form that they fill out before they are able to get the shot, make sure there's no allergies, nothing that could interfere with them getting the shot, any kind of immune system problems, things like that. Um, and then we also are able to counsel patients. Um, the, uh, this wasn't today, but the other week I got to actually show a lady, walk her through how to check her blood sugar using the blood glucose monitor, how you set it up, how you use the lancing device to prick your finger. So that was that was super cool. So I got to do that and then um, just helping out wherever I needed. So I was super excited, like I said, to see the hepatitis A vaccine because that's not something that I have been able to give myself before. And there are 11 vaccines that pharmacists are able to give. So we get licensed, our curriculum, we get licensed first semester of pharmacy school. And that we go through an online course and then we have in-person training days. And we are actually all certified to give immunizations. And there are 11 immunizations that we as pharmacists can give, which is so awesome. And it just shows how far pharmacy has come as a profession. So these are the 11 vaccines pharmacists are able to give. We start with Haemophilus. We can also give Hepatitis A and B, the HPV vaccine, the flu vaccine, the vaccine for measles, mumps, rubella, meningitis, and pneumonia. We can also give the tetanus and the booster for the tetanus vaccine, the chickenpox vaccine, as well as the shingles. I wanted to point out the two different flu vaccines. So we have a vaccine for patients 65 and older, and we also have the other vaccine that you see here that is used for patients under 65. And it can either be in a syringe like that that we draw up, or it can also be in a already ready vial like the other one that is for 65 and older.
so this is the day before this is on sunday when i'm preparing everything i of course always like to start with my list to see what i have that i need to get done that day what i know is going to be coming up soon and things i need to just keep in the back of my mind that i should start working on and then after i make my list i like to prioritize and see what is needed to be done first so here in these next few clips you're going to see that i am prioritizing the two biggest things that are coming up soon this week which is our residency showcase and then my capstone presentation i have always struggled about setting aside enough time for each thing and not feeling overwhelmed especially if i have a lot coming up in a short period of time so i've seen people using timers and setting timers for themselves so in this video i set a 30 minute timer and i worked on researching the programs i was going to be talking with and then going from there to see you know if i feel like i can go more than those 30 minutes then i will but if not then i have time to switch mindsets if i choose to do so and i think that is a great tip to use just in any other setting as well so i really recommend that tip that really helped me feeling less overwhelmed by the amount of things i needed to get done of course i have to practice to make sure i get my timing just right and i can pronounce everything hey guys so it's currently six o'clock i just got home from the gym so i'm gonna get ready super quick and get ready to leave to head back to the school today we're at the school presenting our capstone so i have to leave around seven to give myself plenty of time to get there and it's also super foggy outside and I'm driving some back roads. So we are gonna get ready to get our day started and I'll take you along with me. Okay guys, so I just wanted to have a little chit chat about today. So this has been a super busy day. I got to get in my workout first thing this morning. It was a lot shorter just because I knew that I needed to get ready and everything. And I wanted to have plenty of time for that. We had what's called our capstone presentation today, which is pretty much a research project that we do looking at two different studies and then taking that and comparing it to what's done currently in therapy for whatever disease or whatever condition we're looking at or just whatever it is in general and then give our conclusion based off of those studies if we think it would be beneficial or not so my topic on this was using intralipid therapy which is a type of fat substance fat liquid that's used for patients who aren't able to like eat by mouth they have to get their nutrition through an IV. So it's used in that, but this study and I, what I chose to look at was using this in patients who have infertility, who've gone through different IVF or in vitro fertilization trials and have just not been able to have a successful pregnancy from this. I actually chose this topic because it was something I saw at one of my previous, my actually my very first rotation, and I thought that was super interesting. So we had to be at our school today to do that, which was super fun. Look at these pumpkins, it makes me so happy. And I just got home. So we are going to head in and get ready for the second night of the residency showcase. So two of the other programs I'm really looking into are tonight during this. So we're gonna head in and do that. It starts at four and it's from four to 5.30. So I'm not gonna be starting right at four, but we'll be able to get in sometime anyway. And overall experience wise, everything is very hands on. So um, our items, most, most of the rotations I've been on so far, like our preceptor will round with us the first few days and kind of model the things that they would look out for in that patient population. Brooke, I am 
Lexi. Oh, Can you hear me? Hi. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. It's not bad.